Welcome back once again for another SnowRunner truck review. Today we're going to take a look at the second free anniversary DLC vehicle that is comparable to some American trucks and very similar to others. So before we start, I ask that you please help support the channel by liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into this and check it out. Going through technological advancements, the International Paystar series moved on to the HX models. The fourth model being the HX520, this truck was manufactured as a haul tractor, crane support, and also a dump truck. This vocational truck strives to deliver four things, strength, durability, driver productivity, and superior uptimes. At the Navistar Proving Grounds, this vehicle was subjected to rigorous testing which simulated 10 years of extreme wear and tear, as well as other tests. In SnowRunner, the HX520 has great utility, yet it is very similar to some other trucks in its class. It has the ability to do most things well enough to satisfy drivers for what it is, but there are some hurdles to get over when braving the wilds. As a disclaimer, before we dive into these pros and cons, I must express that a lot of these upsides and downsides are very similar to other American trucks in its class and out of its class as well. So without wasting any more time, the base stats will be on your screen, but we're jumping right into downside number one, clearances and frame length. Just like the other American trucks that have no raised suspension option, the HX doesn't have the clearances to keep its frame out of the elements. In addition to its frame being close to the driving surface, it also is quite long, which makes it prone to high centering as well. Two things that definitely make this game more difficult are heavy conditions and very uneven surfaces. Downside number two, it's very weak at low driver levels. Being available at low driver levels doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a better pick than other trucks before level 15. Its all-wheel drive and differential locking are available through level requirements, but you have to wait a little bit just to tap into those. Overall, just plan to use another truck until you can access those features. Downside number three, somewhat lightweight and wheel spin. While the International is one of the heavier trucks in its class, the engine is still strong and it's somewhat lightweight, being under 10 tons. To quickly wrap this one up, gearbox manipulation, all-wheel drive, and differential locking will be crucial in mitigating this downside. I must stress that due to lack of clearances, there isn't much room to let this downside go very long lest your frame become totally submerged in the elements. Downside number four, suspension. I was afraid of seeing this trend continue in the heavy duty class and yet again, here we are. Just like both of the small Caterpillar trucks, the HX520 shares the walking beam suspension as well. However, it does feel a little softer and not so compressed, but I still felt this one needed to be mentioned on our downsides list. Downside number five, tires. While it is nice to have an upgraded tires without the race suspension option, like most American trucks, it maxes out at 47 inches and its tire loadout ends at the UOD off-road set. This isn't a bad tire set by any means, however, my personal wish list would be to have the OHDs on all American trucks. Downside number 6, Terrain Limitations. With knowledge of our previous downsides, any driver can make an educated guess on how it's going to perform in those conditions. Again, like the other heavy duty class trucks that have similar features like small tires, short clearances, frame lengths, weight issues, and overall mediocre stability, the HX is going to struggle in rough places. It's going to handle a lot of areas really well as you'll see, but not like the high tier trucks. Downside number seven, average consumption and tank size. 
This one is pretty odd because some trucks with this engine seem to have sporadic consumption, some others not so good, and then there's ones like the HX that teeter on average to good and then sporadic at times. Overall, the burn values bounce around even with heavy loads and can get over 5.0 gallons per minute, but they never truly stay that high for long. Also, it's nice to have the option to turn off all-wheel drive for those fuel saving perks on lighter terrain. And finally, coming in at downside number eight, it's expensive. One of the most surprising downsides is how expensive this truck is. Normal mode is not a big deal because it's free, but for those who wish to purchase it on hard mode, have to pay the insane price for the HX. It's definitely a downside because based on its overall performance, this should be half the price or comparable to other trucks in its class. So after eight downsides, I think it's time to talk about some good news now. Here are the pros for the International HX 520. Coming in at the normal upside, number one, power, all wheel drive and differential locking. The HX shares an engine set that a lot of North American trucks do, yet it is a pretty good top engine that's currently ranked number 9 strongest engine in the game. Adding all-wheel drive and differential locking into this equation allows for the HX to do pretty well despite the onslaught of downsides we previously went through. Upside number 2, moderately stable. When comparing weights to other trucks in its class, the HX has a low center of gravity, but not as much as the CAT CT680 and 681. However, even though it does share that suspension we talked about, it is indeed softer. The softer suspension helps to absorb terrain shock, which can jar the vehicle off balance. I don't feel that the HX is a standout when it comes to balance, but it has a wide stance and it does seem to stay upright despite my bad driving. Upside number three, multiple engines. We previously mentioned the multiple engines it shares. Well, I believe this is an upside because drivers can choose whether they want maximum power, consumption, or a balance of the two. Personally, I think on the HX, I would stick to its top performing engine due to its burn values being relatively decent overall. Upside number four, utility. Something that stands out about the HX is utility. I believe this is due to the longer frame that we mentioned in downside number one. Another pleasing thing I must mention is the 520 can utilize these add-ons rather well to fit the mission, making it very versatile and a good choice for a slew of roles. Our downside number four was pretty easy to spot, especially when it can use combinations of add-ons and trailers while still being able to perform on off-road surfaces. Upside number five, driver level upgrades. Previously, we mentioned how the International was not a good starter truck, which is true. Yet my biased opinion is that these driver level upgrades are one of Sabre's better ideas when adding new trucks to later parts of the game or adding new upgrades to existing vehicles. While it does take around 15 driver levels to achieve, like I've said before, driver levels go pretty fast in SnowRunner nowadays and this makes this truck usable relatively early in the game despite our downside number two. And finally, coming in at upside number six, it's a free DLC truck. For how expensive this truck is to buy in game, it is really nice that the first one is free if you are playing normal mode. While some might not agree this is an upside, Sabre adding this as the second free DLC truck was a very nice gesture that I hope is repeated this year. Alright, so moving on to my personal ratings for this truck. For power, it shares a similar engine with other trucks that are very capable. For terrain navigation, a rating of 2. The subpar clearances, long frame, smaller tires, and wheel spin caused the HX to suffer in a lot of areas. 
new players would have to wait till mid-levels to be able to use the upgrades, and learning those switchable features when unlocked requires a little bit of practice, so I felt this one seemed fitting. For aesthetics, there's really not much to say here. I think it's a really good looking truck. Stability is good, but not so much to merit a higher rating. However, like I've explained, I think drivers can have confidence in the HX. Average capacity and fuel economy kept this score from being higher, but I do feel it can accomplish longer routes effectively. The HX is able to use most add-ons, including log attachments as well, so this one is an easy 5. The 520 is lighter in weight, has smaller UOD tires, and those wheel spin issues we talked about, and this all equates to a sub-par grip value. So in conclusion, the International HX 520, despite my scrutiny, is a very capable truck. I've used comparisons to both of the smaller Caterpillar trucks in its class, but I believe this can be used in a lot of scenarios with driver patience. When discovering the walking beam suspension, I have to admit I was not really optimistic. Yet after testing, I found it did seem as if its overall travel was better. Because of this, I felt that hauling medium and short logs on the International HX indeed felt better than both of the smaller Caterpillars. The HX 520 feels like a white western star 4964 without the race suspension and a stronger engine. I've said the 4964 was a workhorse, and I think the HX 520 can be the same for what it is. I found it difficult to make this review because the HX had similar downsides and upsides to other trucks I've reviewed previously. It took a little extra time to look into things more, like that suspension we talked about. I do have a few things that I would like to see change on the HX, but that is a lecture I do not wish to get into right now. So, in closing, the International HX 520 is a strong, well-balanced truck that I do recommend to drivers outside of hard mode due to the price. I don't think it's a standout in any category, but like I've said before, it feels very strong all around. Try this one out and let me know what you think. I hope this review gave you a fresh, new perspective of the International HX 520. Please smash that like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. God bless and stay upright.